right, perfect. For time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and, and get us kicked off so that we can, can stay on track. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining our Amify webinar today about optimizing your Amazon presence for mobile. As we know, a ton of purchases happen through the Amazon mobile app and on mobile in general. Um, and we want to talk about how your brand should be thinking about your content and your presence so that you can win with the, the mobile shopper who is the predominant shopper on Amazon today. So we'll go through some quick introductions, um, talk about the differences between the mobile and desktop experiences on Amazon, and then how you can optimize for mobile um, in a way that's different than how you would think about your D2C website. And then we'll talk some quick do's and don'ts for mobile optimization, and then some actionable small tweaks that you can make that will make a big difference. And then we'll finalize it with some best practices for keeping the mobile user in mind. And we'll hold time at the end for any questions. So throughout the entire presentation, if you have a question, feel free to drop it into the question, the Q&A bar or the chat bar. And we'll either kind of address it if, it, if it's relevant during the, that specific content section, or we'll hold everything till the end. So with that, I'm Sean Lee. I'm our chief marketing officer um, here at Amify. And my background's primarily been on the brand side of things. I spent about a decade um, at Procter & Gamble in brand management, leading brands like Old Spice Deodorant, Imes Pet Food. I co-founded a brand called Zevo Insect, and then I've led e-commerce for a, a private equity beauty company. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Joe and Allie to introduce themselves. Very excited to learn from them today. Hi, I'm Allie. I am our associate content director here, heading up all of our creative content team um, at Amify. I come from a copywriting background, agency background, as well as some in-house marketing um, type experience. So i um, excited to share some of this uh, information with you guys and just some overall best practices for, for your content on Amazon with the e-commerce shopper. Hi, I'm Joe. Uh, similar to Ali, I also have an agency background uh, in design, also uh, small branding studios uh, in sort of the greater Cincinnati area, um, and also in-house uh, marketing for uh, Brian Geist Brewery uh, for several years. So predominantly a brand and packaging background um, and slowly finding out how that translates into Amazon's e-commerce space uh, and how to grow brands in that way, uh, different perspective excited to share what I know. Awesome. Thanks, Allie and Joe. We're excited uh, to learn from you guys today. It's always, always insightful. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't do a little bit of plug for Amify. So Amify is a company, we essentially help brands win on Amazon. So we're a full service strategy management and operational partner that happen, helps with everything from enhancing your content to, to growing through advertising all the way down to to platform operations and management and helping you forecast and, and run supply chain into Amazon. So we span the gamut. We operate in a full service capacity. In some cases, we'll do only content and advertising for our clients, but we've been doing this for about 10 years and bill ourselves as the, the Amazon experts. Um, some quick things about us. We have about 150 million of gross merchandise value on Amazon under management every year. Um, we have a warehouse capability for our partners if they need it. Um, sometimes we'll, we'll kind of create bundles or, or label or bag things for our partners if their supply chain can't handle it. And then we're one of the only venture capital backed full service providers in the space, which has allowed us to grow um, and get talent well ahead of, of kind of where, where we need to be and hire great people like Joe and Allie to, to lead our accounts. And then from a, a logo standpoint, we work with everybody from kind of fast growing startups like Dr. Squash, all the way to the other end of the spectrum with Fortune 500s like Procter & Gamble, GSK, BF Corporation, um, Energizer, and kind of everyone in between. So our team is very well versed in all types of brands on Amazon and, and how to grow them. And then I'll give a plug to, to Joe and Allie and the work that they do. For a lot of our clients, they've won a variety of Marcom Awards, Marketing Effectiveness Awards, and DigiDay Awards over the past couple of years for our, our growth and work for, for our clients on Amazon. So very proud of that work. Um, I think they do a phenomenal job with content, and you'll, you'll hear that come out as they're thinking about um, ways you can optimize for mobile today. So with that, I'll turn it over to either Joe or Ali to talk about the differences between the mobile and desktop experiences. Yeah, for sure. So I think um, one of the reasons why probably most of you are here today and and why um, this is a, a relevant 
point of conversation for us too, and something that we constantly have to force ourselves to think about is we are sitting and designing and, and writing and working on a desktop computer, um, reviewing and, and considering all of our content on a desktop computer. And it's really easy to forget that a lot of our consumers are actually um, on mobile devices when they're shopping, especially on Amazon. So Amazon doesn't exactly share this information, um, but from our across our client portfolio, we have noticed that about 70% of our orders are placed actually on mobile. Um, that's either on tablet or on the um, the app on your phone. And so with that in mind, we are always making sure that we're considering um, what that mobile shopper is experiencing when we are creating content for our product landing pages, um, store pages, and, and advertisements. So a couple of quick points of difference between the desktop experience and the mobile experience. Um, on desktop content uh, sort of flows predictably. So you'll start from a title, uh, you'll see the main product image and alongside that you're going to have things like product attributes um, if they're applicable and available in your category as well as um, the key features, key, key product feature bullet points and, um, and the additional images and then down through the A plus content after you scroll past about a hundred different advertisements. Um, the product detail bullets are shown in their full capacity unless you've really gone over your character counts. Um, so no, no additional clicks, no additional exposure needed for that information to get to your consumer. Um, I think usually they show around the first thousand characters. Sometimes that's more or less depending on what's there. Um, and images are a little bit lower in hierarchy. So the Amazon has made on the desktop version, it's really um, big and prominent to have the main product on white image. Uh, but the, the images, the additional product images are sort of tucked behind that, that product gallery um, in the thumbnails. And so it's a little bit less of a priority on the desktop version. On the mobile version, however, um, your title and images are still consistently at the top. Um, and the title is super important because it does take up that first little row of, of information. And the image clearly is, is, is a huge part of what's taking up space on your screen. Um, however, the product attributes, the key feature bullets and the A plus content kind of can move around depending on industry, um, depending on, on your specific product, even within an industry, Amazon has some sort of magical algorithm that they don't share with anyone um, that, that puts the most important information at the top. And so um, it's really important to consider how all these pieces and parts sort of play together um, because you're not always going to have a consistent experience for your consumer depending on what algorithm Amazon is testing that day. Um, a lot of times the A plus content can actually come just behind the, um, the image gallery. And so having A plus content that's really uh, mobile friendly and um, accurate and, and relevant for your product is super important. Um, also, a lot of times the product feature bullets are um, hidden behind a learn more or a show more um, expander. And so only usually the first two bullets are shown unless you've been extremely brief. So if you have been writing longer form copy, which is really great for SEO and for search, uh, search results, um, it can actually get tucked behind an expander. And then the only information that someone is going to see unless they actively engage with your listing is the first or, sec first or second bullet point. Um, so you wanna make sure that those are really uh, as, as descriptive and helpful as possible. Um, images also, like I said, are, are a lot higher in the hierarchy on mobile. Um, you are there, the consumer is very used to scrolling through Amazon, uh, or sorry, scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Facebook carousels. And so they are sort of pre-programmed to swipe through those images. And so your additional product images are gonna get a lot more um, view time on mobile than they would even on your desktop version. So um, a couple of really sort of general best practices when it comes to Amazon, but these are best practices because they are super relevant for mobile. Um, so you wanna always make sure that in your title, you are leading with the brand name and the name of the product. That seems straightforward, but um, it's not always consistently the case. Um, and we do always recommend using two or three of the most important keywords or keyword phrases, depending on your industry and how competitive or how, um, how difficult to find your product is, um, but not to, to keyword stuff and add too much to your title um, because on mobile, it does get cut off. And so if you have inserted too many category keywords, um, it can actually make it really hard to understand exactly what you're selling. So we, we urge people to keep the title 
as clear as possible, but as relevant as possible also. Um, and some of you, depending on um, your, I think it's product sales and brand registry and a few other, uh, few other things, there are uh, ways to A-B test your titles down the road. So um, in, a, in a previous iteration where having a bunch of keywords might have been helping you, there are also op options for testing shorter titles or different keywords um, using the A-B testing feature and um, to see if maybe condensing that actually might help boost sales, even if it does um, lose a little bit of traction on, on search results. So it just sort of depends on, on the, the notoriety or, or the uh, known amount of your product uh, versus how much you're relying on those search result um, pages. Here's a nice example of what not to do, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, someone thought Evernote was really important and they wanted to say it a hundred times in this title and it's just not necessary. So keeping it really clean and concise would have probably helped this product a lot. Uh, the product attributes section. Um, so this does not show up on every listing. It does not show up in every industry or category. However, it is automatically populated by Amazon based on what they have decided is helpful for your customer. Um, a lot of this information is managed um, when you initially create your listing. So it has to do with like package size or um, ounces, whether there's a specific ingredient that is or is not included. Um, and then the, the brand name and a few other, a few other categories. Um, Amazon has recently created the listing quality dashboard, which helps you manage this information. Um, but it's not, it's not super user friendly yet. And um, some of this information does require an actual reach out to Amazon to, to fix some of the data. So super important to make sure that when you're adding new products that anything that is in your, um, your product upload is accurate and relevant um, because Amazon may be pulling from that backend data to, to populate these attributes and that can or cannot help your customer find your product. Um, these do show up pretty high on mobile. So having, if, these, if you're seeing these consistently on your listings, you wanna make sure that those are accurate because we have not seen them disappear so much as just continuing to appear across, across categories. Um, some bullet point tips, um, and I'm not going to read through all of these, but as I mentioned, it's really great to have longer form bullets to boost your SEO. However, because they can get hidden on mobile, you want to make sure that the first one or two are really getting straight to the benefit for your consumer. So for this product specifically, um, it is a body scrub that helps reduce bumps on the skin. And so getting in some of the keywords like uh, strawberry skin or chicken skin, which are actually commonly searched for this product, um, but but focusing it more on what the product is and what it does so that if everything else here is hidden behind that mobile expander, um, it's still really clear what the person who is shopping is, is, is finding when they get to this page. Um, a couple comments on images, and I will hand this over to Joe since he is our our, our director image magician. Um, but really what we what we want to drive home here is that because images are super important on mobile, um, you want to take the space to uh, highlight a few more of your of your product attributes in a visual way. So if that's adding text overlays or using sort of infographic type layouts, um, it can be a really great place to reiterate information that would normally be found in your bullet points, um, but maybe those don't get surfaced as easily on mobile. And so doing it here in the images is is key. Yeah, and I think the other piece too is like, just think about how everybody on this call behaves and how consumers behave. I mean, we're constantly on apps, be it Instagram, be it TikTok, be it dating on Tinder, like everybody is is swiping and reading pictures for the quick hitting, like high level copy. So assume that the majority of people are gonna get the most impact from having a visual with your, your overlays and copy versus um, taking time to read all the great bullets that you're, you're writing. There will be some that do it, but a lot of people want great quick hitting content that they can swipe through. So making this even more important on mobile since it's one of the first things they see. Yeah, um, reiterating everything that's just been said, um, really the, the key for the listing set images is using really clear photography of your products. Um, I would say not necessarily on white, um, sort of like nicely stacked and shot um, you know, or, or laid out um, and using, you know, say for an example on the third row, those Maddie's products, um, being able to do call outs with, you know, arrows, if it's, there's a lot of information on the back, like ingredients and nutrition information, 
uh, but you only want to highlight the sort of not necessarily the most important, but maybe the ones that the consumer would find most important. Um, image sets are, are like a, a great area for that. Um, you know, and, and you know, you don't want to overdo it with text. You know, at the same point, there's sort of that uh, caveat there. Um, you know, so really, you know, clean, concise copy, um, and and relying on on beautiful imagery, beautiful product photography, lifestyle photography. Um, it's also going to be a really good place where you know if if you you kind of show what you can't tell because of you're you're limited by the proportions of a mobile device. Um, so this could be a good place to show features that you you know don't necessarily need intense in-depth explanation um, and things that are more understood uh, or more easily understood visually. Um, you know, and again, short everything should be short, simple, infographic overlay sort of information design. Um, when it comes to listing set images. Yeah, and I'm an, I'm an old school like marketer. So like it's almost like the old principles that they used to teach you about like an in-store display at like a grocery store or like your print advertisement. I mean, really it's that like first moment of truth mentality where it's like, if you can't say it in, in five to seven words, maybe rethink whether or not it should be on an, an overlay. 100%. <laughs> Um, you know, and here again, because again, the the sort of physical constraints of a mobile device, uh, you know, depending on your product, it might be difficult for a consumer to discern what they're looking at necessarily. Uh, so, you know, when you're using your type and you're using your copy on this imagery, uh, you at times you really want to help the consumer understand what they're looking at, um, you know, and sort of call out what what this is, what it's doing why it's beneficial to them and sort of drive the idea of why they should be purchasing this, um, you know, as well as also using uh, iconography um, and calling out certain benefits of the product, whether it's an issue of sourcing, if, you know, if it's vegetarian, vegan friendly, um, you know, if it's not tested on animals, things like that, sort of not strictly product benefits, but sort of ethical benefits um, that might draw further interest uh, from a consumer. Um, and like I said before, using using call outs, um, you know, arrows are a really obvious way of doing it. Um, but, you know, it's a really for the time that someone's going to be looking at an image, it's a really good way an effective way to uh, highlight key information. Uh, okay, so reiterating what Ali said, you know, on, on desktop, you know, A plus usually appears at the bottom of the page or in between a bunch of if you like this product, you should look at this or, you know, um, but the way it tends to default on mobile is it bumps up above all of that. Um, so when it comes to mobile, again, I'm just repeating it and be concise and you want to call out the important information, important details in a very succinct way. Um, and, and with this, you know, I, the way that I look at designing A plus content and directing A plus content with the team is A plus is like the, the highway between infographic design, uh, poster design, and almost treating it kind of like your own miniature landing page. It's very product specific, right? Um, and, you know, like the Moby Fox, uh, is, is a really good example of using clean, concise imagery, product rendering. Um, you're using really limited amounts of information to call out the important parts, you know, whether it's like tech specs and if it fits certain watches, um, you know, any sort of supplemental details can be found later on on the listing. Um, so it's it's really important to have that in your A+, plus, um, as well as, as sort of this is the one part on Amazon, whether you're talking desktop or mobile, that you can show your brand and you're not sort of, you know, confined visually uh, or with copy. So you can really, it's basically, it's a, it's a playground. You can do what you want effectively, right? Um, so this is a really good, A plus is, a, is the, the space to show sort of, of who you are as a brand, what you stand for, sort of fully deploying your visual creative. Um, and I will add here too that this, these two examples that you're seeing here on screen are actually pretty good dichotomous examples of what we what we tend to do here. 
Um, the on the left with the smartwatch bands, Mobifax is a really a brand that speaks to <clears throat> like just crazy fans of specific franchises. And and if that's the case, it's a lot less about the technical details of the product and a lot more about like, dude, if you love Star Wars, you're going to love this. And so you've got just like this really beautiful space background and just calling out some of that mood um, and emotional type of content here versus Bonafide, which is a um, it's a natural health, women's healthcare product. And, and so it's really important that it is as effective and safe as possible. And so can, like conferring all of that information in a really digestible way so that um, the consumer can kind of assuade their fears and know that this product is going to work for the, the problem that they need it to solve. Um, it gets a little bit more in depth. It gets a little bit more technical and it does sort of answer more questions than the one on, on the left just because of the nature of the, of the product. So you know your consumer, you know your industry, you know what kinds of information you need to convey. It's all about figuring out the best way to do that, both visually and, and um, through copy um, in your A plus content. Yeah. And I think I express on mobile, like my bad analogies of everybody swiping everything on, on TikTok and Instagram and Tinder. I mean, this is generally like right below the, the thumbnails and, and one of the most important things too. So in that swiping mentality, they're kind of like swiping to, to read the content and consume it. So again, just think through that experience and make sure that it works really, really well on mobile. Yeah, and I, I, I would also add, I, I feel like Bonafide is a good example of A plus that feels very website like. Um, so it, it, you know, it's while the consumer knows they're on Amazon, it creates a more sort of, I don't know, a more inherently sort of branded experience, uh, rather than I feel like a lot of post things that I've seen in as a consumer and is sort of looking for my own benefit and research as a job like a lot of it's just sort of images just put up there with copy and and not a lot of consideration in terms of how it feels uh, and how it represents the brand um, and I feel like Bonafide's a really great example of of branding a plus content um, mm -hmm. So another um, main differentiator that I sort of want to throw in sideways here, um, and it may not be available to each of you, I'm not sure exactly of who all is on the line and, and the businesses that you're in, um, but there is a beta program in the advertising console for um, those brands that have brand registry, and it is um, these things that they call brand posts. And so again, sort of in that same niche as like an Instagram site sort of um, content piece, um, these posts, while they do show up, um, they just recently added them as a page on brand stores, um, but it's kind of tucked in the, it's the very last tab on your brand store. So it may not be showing in your, in your top navigation. Um, however, these brand posts do show up on mobile and they do show up um, actually ahead of quite a few of the advertisement lines. And so um, if you aren't taking advantage of these, but others in your industry and category are, there's, it's just another place for, for competitors to show up on your listing. So if you can take, take advantage of brand posts um, within, your, within your programs, then, then you'll be able to add this sort of really beautiful, splashy Instagram-esque content. Um, and they are currently still free to use for brands. Um, and so it's just one more place on mobile that you can show up that doesn't really show up anywhere else um, on desktop except for within your brand store page. And that's really if someone makes the effort of going to find you. Um, and Ali, I think, I think the other piece too is at a minimum, you wanna have at least two so that they're showing up on your own pages because as you can see here, two are showing up. If you don't have them, chances are if, if you're not doing brand posts today and you went to one of your own product pages on mobile, you're gonna see your competitors or someone Amazon thinks is your competitor showing up there. So two generally crowds anybody out. They may still kind of end up yeah, on Yeah, there's more on the car carousel. So there's potentially more down the page, but yeah, having two there kind of fills out the fills out that initial grid. And plus it's just a place for, for a little bit more branding and character for your brand to come through where you can actually kind of speak directly to the consumer as opposed to speaking um, like just strictly product benefits in a, in a listing. So here, just some additional examples of how that kind of, um, how that spells out. You tag your product in your brand post. Um, you can provide up to 2000 characters um, for, for the content. So that's actually pretty hefty. Um, these are all much shorter than that, but um, you can get a little bit of um, extra content in there and it shows up on, on mobile um, product listing pages. And then again, in the, in the brand post section of your, of your brand store. 
So a couple of small things um, that can make a big difference between just what you're already doing for your brand pages and, and what, you, what you could be doing to make them a little bit more mobile friendly. Um, we've mentioned this several times, but paying special attention to your additional images. Um, I know it's really simple to just upload the six-sided pack shots, um, depending on what you're selling and, and or the just like sort of size and scale images. Um, for your product. And that's been fine on desktop for a lot of reasons because most people aren't scrolling through those images, but on mobile, they really, really are. Um, so here is an example of one way where we have um, taken advantage of that, that right to left scroll um, and be able to kind of use the, the two moons of Tatooine. Am I, am I Star Warsing that right? Um, as the background for this, for this Im <laughs> image set um, to really bring to life sort of the, 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 the band, the, the product itself, but also just that sort of like we get it and we're part of the in crowd um, in, these, in these image sets. Um, something to consider on dimensions. Um, Amazon recommends that you do at least a thousand by thousand pixels minimum, but um, you may consider using some that are slightly more vertical just because they will take up more of that screen um, on mobile. Um, not beyond images, um, we've said this before, but to keep the title simple, um, really only using the most important keywords because on mobile it's going to get cut off, especially through search results. Um, you wanna have that as concise as possible or as concise as at least helpful for your brand um, to make sure that it's not too cluttered or too much to read, or at least that not too much of the important information is, is toward the end of that title. Um, keep in mind that there is only one version currently of A plus content supported. So it's because it's higher priority on mobile, you really should consider mobile first. Um, it sometimes makes it look a little funny on desktop just because we're so used to seeing things scaled for desktop. And so if you're looking at it and reviewing it on your own screen, it can feel a little bit like blown out almost. Um, but when you're seeing it on mobile, um, having making sure that the text is big enough to read once it's scaled down, making sure that the images are are clear and, and responsive when it scales down is, is super important. And then um, within the product listings, the videos will be muted when you play them by default. So um, using things like on-screen overlays and text supportive text to keep the viewer engaged in your video as opposed to just swiping past it um, if they don't wanna have their sound on. A couple of sort of do's and don'ts for mobile optimization. We've sort of covered most of this, I think, but just to really call back all of the stuff that we've talked about today, um, you do want to think visually images and A plus content make their biggest impact on mobile. They're important on desktop, but they are critical on mobile. So making sure that you are thinking through all of your imagery, all of your, your, your additional product images, and then formatting your A plus content appropriately. Um, writing concisely. I am a word person. Um, it hurts me to know that most people don't read, um, but I have come to terms with that and made my career anyway. And then I'm just dealing with the fact that the best way to get through to people is usually in as few words as possible. Um, making sure that you're getting that main product benefit um, in the first bullet, thinking of it as like your 10 second elevator pitch of what your product is and what it solves for people. Um, really more on the solves more than the what it is. Um, and getting that across in the very first bullet is going to help you help you with conversion on mobile. Um, do design with scalability in mind. I know that um, in-house departments are not always capable of creating specific assets for Amazon when you're hard, when you're hard at work building them for your packaging or your DTC site. So if there's not capabilities in-house to do that, um, Amazon's live text modules can help. Um, they aren't pretty, <laughs> but they do scale um, like proportionally on mobile. And so um, as we, we tend to try to design fully mobile friendly um, experiences, but when those are not available using Amazon's live text modules is helpful. And then um, taking advantage of brand posts, again, just because that's it's free real estate that um, your competitors could be using on your product detail page if you're not using them. Um, so obviously, if you are a brand register owner brand, um, take advantage of those and, and, and get that real estate for yourself. Um, the do nots, um, again, sad, but, but do not expect your bullets to do all of the work. Um, they are often either hidden or just the last thing that your consumer will see. So you have to hope that they scroll all the way to the bottom and almost no one will. So make sure that all of that information is, um, is relevant and, and appears everywhere else um, in your images and in your A plus content. 
And then um, again, do not rely on products, images alone, the six sided product shots by themselves. Um, use some text overlays to make sure that you're, you're conveying the really important parts um, and, and help guide your consumer through the swipe and then down to the, the add to cart button. So oh, any questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> Let me see, we've got one in the, the question bar here. You mentioned push, putting keywords in bullets for SEO. Amazon set, has said, perhaps this is old info, that their algorithm doesn't necessarily crawl slash index bullets. Are you suggesting adding keywords to bullets for search engine or if Amazon does crawl or index them? Thank you. So I think, uh, I think the question here is like, what is Amazon actually crawling? Um, and, and Ali, I know you guys have good perspective on this. We know that like the titles are, are important and that actually does help, but I don't know if you have any updated guidance or or help on like bullet points or some of the, the live text and A plus content. I know we've, it, it's, it's kind of evolved. Yeah, I think, um, so titles are, are the most important. Um, we have seen listings go from eighth page rank to first page by simply adding a specific word to a title. Um, but in our experience, it, it is, it, they're, they're, <laughs> the SEO is helped by having all the relevant content in your bullets. Now, the um, important thing to note is that it has evolved quite a bit. And so you no longer have to use um, repetitive phrases or, or use the same word over and over again, just to get that same traction. Um, it's relatively smart at this point. Um, and most people are, are starting their searches if they're looking for a product, they're starting them on Amazon. And so that search has um, become even more important to Amazon to make sure that people are finding the products that they need. Um, so it's, a, it's sort of a delicate balance between making sure that you don't sound like a um, like an AI robot <laughs> so that people can believe that your product is, is, is authentic and real. Um, but getting all of the relevant search terms in there both for for SEO, but also to make sure that you're you're hitting when someone is is, is looking at your product, you're saying that you will solve the problem that they're searching for. Um, there also is quite a bit of real estate in the product description field um, for keywords and also um, backend keywords uh, within ASC itself. So you can sort of add in things like. Um, common misspellings or um, alternative terms that maybe aren't exactly how you would represent your product, but you know it solves the same problem. Um, there's some space in the back end to, to call out those, those pieces of information and, and sort of all cohesively, um, if you're aiming toward the right, toward the right keywords, you're, you're going to start tracking for those. Yeah, and I think some of that guidance a few years ago came from like, like those bad examples of keyword stuffing in titles and keyword stuffing in bullets, that was happening a lot three or four years ago on Amazon. So I think they kind of dialed back their guidance a bit, but like Ali said, it is, it is smart. And I think a case in point for some of that is, is we've done webinars in this before during the honeymoon period, which is kind of that 30 to, to 90 day window when you first launch a new ASINR product, where sometimes you're like, Hey, how am I showing up on page one when I only have eight reviews and it like, I, I, sh I have no right to be there. That's when Amazon's kind of using its algorithm and scraping your keywords and data to try to figure out where you fit in the ecosystem for those keywords. And we've seen that disciplined keyword work in the titles, bullets, all the backend stuff has really helped during that honeymoon period phase. But again, it's like Google's algorithm, everything, there's theories, they're not going to come out and publish. Here's the, the exact 10 things you can do to, to rank, but we are seeing, I mean, it makes sense. And like Ali said, if a consumer is searching for a problem solution, having that language in there validates that they found the, the solution to that problem. So in general, it's just a good, good best practice. Any other questions? All right, if uh, there are no other questions, we will give some folks some time back today and thank you for for spending time with Joe and Allie. I know I always learn a ton every time we go through this. Um, so hopefully there's some actionable tips that you can take to update your presence on mobile. And if you have any questions or need some help, as always, you can reach out to, to me, Sean Lee, S-E-A-N-L-E-E -E, at goamify.com um, or go to our website and click the uh, let's talk button. And we would be happy to uh, offer our advice or opinion or answer any questions you have around Amazon. So thank you everybody. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Allie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.